If you have followed anything that I teach, then you know one of the biggest things that I stand behind are scholarships. This is money for college that does not have to be paid back. Hello, we all would love that, right? In fact, I got six figures, I graduated completely debt-free because of it. And so in today's video, I wanna talk about the different types of scholarships because this can save your family, your student, or if you are helping pay for it, parents, then this can save you thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So that said, we wanna talk about all the different types because really the students that get that true free ride or get paid to go to college, they do a combination of all of the different sources. That's what I did. That's what most of our families have done that have gotten that free ride. So I want to make sure that you know about all of them and also about the ones that we don't want to use if we can help it. Now make sure you hit subscribe because every week I have a new strategy for you to help your student work towards a debt-free degree. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Pearson, founder of The Scholarship System, where we redefine paying for college to help families build strong financial futures rather than ones buried in debt. And scholarships is our main weapon. Okay, we've helped families secure well over $13 million to date, and that number is not slowing down whatsoever. So we have seen a lot when it comes to scholarships. Now that said, this is not meant for international students. This is focused for U.S. citizens or permanent residents. We are just not focused or familiar with how it works for international students. <laughs> Okay, so before I get into the types of scholarships, let's talk about why we want scholarships. So like I mentioned, I got six figures in scholarships. I got literally paid to go to college. Every semester I got a check back from a university that was beyond the bill and I could use it on what I needed to. So rent, one semester my laptop broke, I studied abroad in Spain. So I was really able to fully dive into that experience because of the scholarships. And also I did work part-time jobs, but I was able to put that money away rather than use it for certain surviving in college. Now that said scholarships, we want scholarships because one, it doesn't have to be paid back. And two, it avoids student debt, which not only has to be paid back, but it has to be paid back with interest. So every dollar that we're getting in scholarships is not only a dollar we don't have to pay ourselves, but we also don't have to pay interest on top of it. So it is actually snowballing how much we've saved every time we get a win. Another big reason we want scholarships is because if we get enough of them, then your student can actually get to where they have an overage check like I did. What is that? That is where whenever a scholarship is sent to a student's account, it is added up into a balance and then they click pay the bill. So say they have 25,000 in scholarship dollars, the bill is 23,000. Well, that other remaining $2,000 will just be sent in a check to your student. How incredible is that? A third reason that we want scholarships is actually networking. You might not think that, but some of the scholarships have banquet opportunities. I actually met Nick Saban, the football coach that just retired. He is one of the most winning coaches for Alabama football. I'm a Gamecock, but so don't hate me, but still it was really cool meeting him. So that was because of a scholarship that I won that was funded by SEC coaches. And it wasn't athletic related at all, by the way. But at that banquet, I actually met people that worked for really impressive companies. And because they were alumni recipients or they were donors for that scholarship, they wanted to help me. So I had tons of cards by the end of the banquet for internships, tons of networking opportunities. So this can be actually a huge benefit as well. And going off of that, we actually had a student get a free trip to Hawaii because of an engineering scholarship that he won. Hello, I think that's even better. <laughs> All right, now one thing though I do wanna say is that you can lose scholarships. So if your student is not meeting criteria, then it can be taken away. So I created a video all about losing scholarships, most common reasons that we can avoid those. So if your student has received some money, you may wanna show them that video. We will link to it in the description or you can find it maybe here. Any kind of resources that I'm gonna mention will be linked down below. Okay. So now let's get into the type of scholarships. So there are two main sources that we kind of organize scholarships in, institutional and private scholarships. Within institutional scholarships, you have athletic scholarships, which is one of the most common that most families go for, yet less than 1% of athletes actually get a free ride. So we'll get there. 
Secondly, there are merit scholarships. These are for the brainiacs, but actually you would be surprised. There are scholarships out there for 2.8s, 3.2s, 3.5s. We do not need a 4.0. I'll talk more on that in a bit. And then third, there are need-based scholarships. A lot of families assume if they make too much money, they can got, not get anything. Not true. But that said, if your family does have financial need, then there are opportunities out there as there should be, right? So that said, we have athletic, we have merit or academic, and then we have need-based. Now then when it comes to the private side, we can get scholarships for almost anything. I'm sure you've heard about the duct tape prom dress scholarship, or I've seen ones for left-handed students. So there's a lot of random ones out there. So again, don't think that we have to be the, the next Einstein or Tom Brady in order to get money. But that said, there are local private scholarships. So these are smaller dollar typically. They are more local, they're more focused. And then there's national private scholarships. Big ones like the Coca-Cola, the Dr. Pepper, KFC, lots of big brands do some big scholarships. Now, truly, these can be for anything. They can be based on community service. They can be based on passions, career plans, merit, financial need. There could be maybe some athletic ones that are not related necessarily to a team at the school, although that is that is less common. I'll share more sources in just a moment, but I want you to understand that the topic of it can really vary. We just recently released a video on scholarships for orphans. So the sky is the limit when it comes to what a student can get a scholarship for. Now, beyond knowing the, the general types of scholarships, we also categorize them two ways, legitimate and worth our time or a scam. So the thing with the, the scams is, of course, if we are applying to those, we might feel like we're doing tons of work. Your student might be saying, I am, I am, I'm applying, but they're not hearing back. And if they're applying to scams, then that's why. And if your student has done this, it's okay. We all have. I even did it. I wasted an entire school year, my junior year in high school, applying to what I call sweepstakes scholarships, where I just was entering drawings and it said, you know, enter to win $10,000 weekly drawing, right? It didn't require much of me. And as I'm sure you're not surprised to hear, I never won a single penny from those. So we want to avoid those. And if you want more details on legitimate versus a scam scholarship, I will link to that video as well below. That video will be helpful as well. Okay, now let's get into where to find these. And this also goes into different types of scholarships because we want to know who is giving the money. So that said, I have a one hour free webinar, okay? So if you're gonna attend anything, that free training will show you exactly how I build scholarship lists. I give specific examples that I've done with students, how I did it myself. And this is how to find legitimate scholarships that have less competition, okay? So that free training, you can go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free training, or click this video here or you can find the link in the description after this. But that said, there are scholarships from so many different sources. So tons of categories, but also tons of sources. They could be parent employers, grandparent employers, credit unions, banks, lawyers offices, chambers of commerce, community foundations, clubs, organizations, doctor's offices, really so many different places. And this is great news because that means that there's a lot of opportunity out there. But again, we always wanna make sure that they're legitimate. Now, very quickly, I know you're probably thinking, well, my student isn't an A-plus student, or maybe you're thinking they're not the next Tom Brady. And like I mentioned earlier, they don't have to be. There are scholarships out there for less than 4.0s, well under 4.0s. We have a student, Tabitha, she actually never assumed she'd get any kind of money and then found us. She ended up getting $38,000 and she had a low threes GPA. So don't just rule it out because we think our student is average, okay? You might also have been told, well, you make too much to get any money. And that's not the case either. I have, I have many families where they are middle of the road, they make a decent income, but these days college is unaffordable for a lot of families, even those that do make a good amount. And scholarship committees know that. So they do not expect you to be below poverty level in order to give funding. In fact, actually that middle set of families are the ones that really are hurting because they don't get that low income pop and they can't afford it. And so they're kind of stuck in the middle. And that's really a lot of our families that are finding scholarships. So that's another one. And then lastly, you might be thinking, well, we don't have time for this. And I'm not saying it doesn't have time, okay, if it, it doesn't require time. If it didn't, everyone would have a free ride. 
But I am saying that if we have a well-oiled system, hence the scholarship system, if you have a clear strategy, essays that your student can reuse, then that's where we can start saving a lot of time. And it doesn't have to be a huge endeavor once we really get that system built. So has your student started applying for scholarships? And if so, what kind have they applied to? What have you found? Where have they been applying? What kind of sources? I'd love to know, share some ideas below, and maybe other people can find the, those kind of sources in their area. I also want to say that the scholarship system, our book, how this all started, is now coming up on our 10-year anniversary, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Blowing. And so for our 10 year anniversary, we are actually releasing a totally rewritten second edition. It's actually almost double the length because we've learned so much over the last decade. So if you want a free copy of this, if you want to get beginner's access, if you want to be the first to know when we're letting it out there and tons of different perks and prizes, then sign up on our VIP book list. You just go to the scholarship system.com slash book VIP and get on there and then we will let you know when it's coming out. We've got lots of stuff planned for the release of our second edition because we're so excited about it. That said, I covered all the types of scholarships we do wanna go. There are also FAFSA grants that don't have to be paid back. This video I was focusing on specifically scholarships. We also mentioned student loans and interest. That is what we want to avoid and that's why it's so important to understand these different types of funding. So don't forget that free training, that free webinar that I linked to in the description or the scholarship system.com slash free training. Also make sure you hit subscribe because I have a new video for you every single week and I will see you in the next video.